Hey guys, somewhere on the trail here, and uh, I just got back a couple weeks ago from my Ozark trail through hike, and uh, since my last gear video, I've had a lot of changes and a lot of uh, upgrades on stuff with my kind of journey towards going um, ultra light is what I've been trying to do. So I got all the weights written down here so I can refer to them quickly and I'm just going to try to go over everything I carried on the hike and I can say right now that my base weight was probably right around 12 pounds. So I'm just going to jump in because I want to keep it moving and I'm going to start with the electronics that I have first and um, kind of took the standard anchor charger with the little case and I actually have um, an extra one in there. Set this down. I got a little kind of knockoff brand, but I've got this anchor. I've had this for um, over three years now, and it's still going strong. And um, as it turned out, I didn't really need two of them. I had, I guess this was kind of a backup the whole way, but I ended up not even using the orange one, and this got me all the way through. So, I got that, um, that anchor charger with a cable is 8.7 ounces, and I also carried this little Gorilla Pod, I had it on the outside of my pack, you'll see when the video comes up, this little Gorilla Pod is 1.8 ounces, and then I just had assorted cables, you know, to charge things with, I had these little... Uh, jars that I kept my extra SD cards in, so that worked out really well. Kept uh, nice and tight in case any fell in the water, they'd stay dry. So uh, I'm not sure I even weighed those. That was just a little thing I threw in at the end. But I also have a new camera that I'm filming with now, and this was the uh, battery charger I took with the cable. And of course that plugs into the anchor. And I carried this um, and I had five batteries with me, four extras. Um, I hope I wrote that down. I don't see it anywhere. Extra camera batteries, 3.2 with charger and cable. Okay, so that's good. So that wasn't too bad and that got me, uh, you'll see in the videos, I hiked the first 139 miles and I had batteries all the way up till I got to the lodge where I stayed and then I charged all this stuff up. Obviously I have a wall charger so I can plug in when I get somewhere. Um, I had an extra flashlight battery, 0 0.6, and I carried this little flashlight which ended up being, um, I mean it's a good little flashlight but for a through hike um, it was not good. I mean the batteries just didn't last. I ended up using my phone mostly. Uh, that flashlight was 2.1 and the battery was 0.6. I just had it all in this bag and then had that all in another bag. And uh, that was another thing I had. I had the underwater case. Let me grab that. I carried that um, in the side of the backpack though, but this is, um, I have the Sony action cam and this thing put it in there and then you can do underwater shots which I didn't do too many um, I was just a little nervous about it I didn't want my footage to get ruined so I did try a little at the end and it worked out great that little case is uh, only 2.9 so all of I, I had a little stick pick also I'm sure you've seen those it's in my backpack too so I could mount the camera to the trekking pole and I also had this phone with me, the Samsung Prime J7, uh, with this case, which I'm glad it was in there because I dropped it in the water. It's 8.7, so it's kind of heavy. And I didn't do any filming with that. I only took photos with that and did all the filming on the Sony cam in 4K. So uh, I'm trying to make these videos look a little better. Hmm. And I also had a little uh, lens cap that I put on that Sony camera here. 
you'll see in a couple videos where I forgot to take it off and you'll see a spot somewhere on the on the shot and that's because dirt and stuff would get on here so finally I just use this to protect the lens um, and then every time I shot I would just as a little lock button I would just pop it off and film and then put it back on put it back in my pocket so that was pretty uh, cool I think I weighed that with the camera yeah with lens cap 4.8 ounces so with all my electronics, it came out to uh, 34 ounces or 2.1 pounds, which was pretty good. And uh, so that was all my electronics. Then I'll try to go through the kitchen stuff I had. I had my Tokes mug, which I've had forever. Little fire straw uh, repair kit for the uh, pad. Some hand sanitizer, lighter, fingernail clippers. A uh, little... Oops, got some Propel in here. Also kept some in the belt of my backpack. Got the little uh, stove here, the BRS that everybody has. That's like 15, 16 bucks. So I had that fuel. My long handle spoon that I've had since I've been hiking. Um, I had this little bag that I used um, just to kind of keep my uh, bathroom stuff separate. So. I actually took part of a brush, I just broke the handle off, and that was good because I brushed my hair out uh, several times, and some toothpaste, and then I had another little patch kit in there, I guess, and I had a toothbrush in there, and I kept this in the side of my jacket pocket, so it was always easy to brush my teeth and stuff, so that was handy. So um, I'll list all the weights on this later. I've got all of, all of these written down somewhere. And then the uh, Granite Gear 16 liter bag, I've had that forever. So uh, moving right along, I'm going to grab some rain gear and go over that real quick. What all I have now, um, I've had this for quite some time. I had this on the Ozark Highlands Trail. This is the uh, Z-Pax Rain Kill. And uh, I used it, I only used it once um, on this trip, but uh, it's good to have it when you need it. Let me see if I wrote any of this down with the, uh, I don't think I weighed this stuff. Rain kill, yeah, 1.98, uh, pack cover, another z uh you know, Cuban fiber thing, super light, um, and this was a new thing I bought for this trip. I've had that green Columbia jacket, and it was a little heavy, so I bought this outdoor research jacket, which I ended up really uh, liking. I, strangely enough, I didn't wear it too much, but I slid it over the end of my sleeping pad and zipped it up, and then would put my sleeping bag in there so if it touched the edge of the tent at night it would be okay and this was great man I, I love this and it packs up so small and it weighs a lot less than the green one um, I'm not sure I updated that before I printed this out but either way the Columbia uh, let's see my other rain jacket was no this one's 6.4 6.4 and of course the umbrella, and I've had this for quite a while now, and I've never had the opportunity to use it, but on this um, hike I got sleeted on and snowed on, so I was able to use it, and it worked out great. Um, I loved it, so that was it for my rain gear, um, and I had a couple a little Cuban fiber stuff sacks that I used. I had a regular one just for all my... Like I put my electronics and other stuff down in there and clean clothes and I keep that separate and so that's really light and then I have this other one I put the sleeping bag in. So anyway some dogs then, started barking in that last pot. Anyway I put my sleeping bag in here and this is one of those that folds out and it has the felt on the inside um, so you can sleep on that at night and it's not like this hard. And actually the first few nights I didn't even turn it around I just put everything in there and slept on it. It didn't even bother me. And then it just occurred to me that I wasn't, uh, go, yeah, I should be flipping it around. But those are really light. And then uh, a couple other little items I have. Of course, I have the little, uh, just the uh, do some spades, super light. 
uh, wipes, of course, a uh, Sawyer filter. This is no good now. Uh, it got frozen. Not while I was asleep or anything. I was sleeping with it, but while I was hiking, it was so cold outside that it froze. Um, the water bottles just kept freezing up while hiking, so that's no good. And I had this for, uh, I had, I only carried two, uh, one liter smart water bottles and I didn't even keep them full all the time, but I used to use this for a clean bag. So I only dipped the bottles in the creek and then I'd filter in here if I wanted to slam like a liter with, uh, Propel, which I do quite often. I wouldn't have to carry as much. And, uh, so let's see here, I've got some clothes to go over. Uh, basically what I wore every day was just a pair of these Jinji toe socks. These are kind of the mid-weight, so they're a little bit uh, thicker than the normal just straight black pair. And because it was colder, I wanted to have those, so I bought like four pair of those. And they worked out uh, really well, except that uh, one pair got a bunch of, I mean like three toes got holes in them, so I'm not sure if that pair was bad. I had ex officio and other type knockoff brand underwear that I had found this hat on the trail which was great threw it on the umbrella so people could see me that was hunting for 10 days while I was out there um let's see yeah pretty much every day wore a shirt like this I bought like eight of these at Walmart they were like 550 a piece they're just those dry work shirt and that worked out great with the green puffy which I'll get to in a second. For hats, I had this just knit cap that I've had for, uh, for gosh, probably 10 years now. When I worked in Illinois at the Blood Center, I got that. Still have it, and uh, had this uh, balaclava, which was great during the day. It could I could slide it over my face and everything and still see, and it would cover. I could breathe through the little uh, netting, and I would put the other hat on over it. And it was really um, great. It worked out great. And I wore my Patagonia Green Puffy, which I've had for a while also. Uh, same old black gloves I have where your these fingertips, you can use your uh, cell phone and stuff for when I wanted to take pictures. So that worked out good. And, and I've got much what I slept in every night were these Capoline, I think these might be three, these are old, um, they're probably up to five or six now, I don't know, but anyway, I slept in these every night and they were really great with a pair of, uh, I ordered some waterproof socks, which I forgot to take with me, but when I did, they sent me these, uh, just their high camp kind of long socks, so I used those to sleep in as well with this uh, Capoline shirt, which is really great. It's all Patagonia stuff. It's really lightweight, but uh, really warm. So this with the sleeping bag, uh, I'm sure some nights it was down between 10 and 20 degrees and I felt pretty good every night. I never had to sleep with my coat on or anything, the hat a few times, but wasn't too bad. These are my old uh, REI hiking pants. I think they're probably seen their last hike. I've got a pretty big hole there in them on this one, and they're getting one on the front. Uh, somewhere down here on the leg right here. So, But I've had these um, since my first hike. They were $60, and they have this side pocket for... You should keep the camera in there for easy access, but I'll probably have to get a new pair of those. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, shoes. Of course, I wore Ultra Olympus shoes. These were brand new um, at the start of the hike. They were size 12. They've been redesigned. If you can see the bottom of that, and you can see the bottom of that, how different they are. It's the same shoe. This is just a newer version and um, I did have a little bit of issues with these first of all they got frozen four or five nights in a row so that made them super tight but I believe I've held them up to the issues since I've been back and they seem like they're just a little bit smaller 
They're both a size 12, but this shoe seems a little bit... It's hard to tell. I've lined them up and really looked at them, and it seems like I may need to go up a half size because they felt super tight on the whole hike, but I mean, they were great. They got me through and everything, but I was uh, surprised that I got a blister, and they just felt... Uh, they didn't feel as loose and uh, as comfortable as the old green ones. And I almost wore the old green ones, but then at the last minute decided to wear the new ones. I put them on and did a couple days on the treadmill, and they felt so good. But once I got out there, it was just, mm, they were just okay, to be honest. I think I needed to go up a size, maybe get a 12 and a half in the newer uh, models. Uh, a couple more things here. My old black diamond trekking poles, the same ones I've had too since my first uh, hiking trip. They're still, I've only replaced the tips one time and they're holding up great. Uh, the Thermarest, uh, this is the large pad, the one that's like 1.1 pound, and it's, uh, I popped this one and, and didn't use it for a while and then patched it. And it's been holding up, and I've been using it now for at least another year, and used it every night. It held up great. Um, I did have a shorter pad that a friend of mine sent me, but I opted to go with the bigger one because I knew it was going to be really cold, and I wanted to be up off the ground. So that's really great. And uh, so I kind of saved the big three for last, and uh, I'll start with the tent. Um, you guys have seen in previous videos that I bought the duplex tent and, uh, of course, used it every night, and it, uh, did pretty good. Um, and I found it hard in some places on the Ozark Trail. It's so rocky that it was hard to stake it down. I broke a couple stakes even trying to get them in the ground, well, which isn't the fault of the I mean, I sometimes had to kind of hammer them in lightly with a rock, but, uh, the temperatures were so low, and with everything, I got a lot of condensation on nights when it would get down to 15 to 20. I mean, it would just get ice all over it, and so it would be really uh, wet and cold when I put it up, but it dried out super fast. I would get it out sometimes during the day, and like in 10, 15 minutes, it was good, so that's an upside. And on the nights where it was warmer, it didn't get any condensation, so... Overall, it did well. My only problem was I'm kind of spoiled from the uh, Big Agnes freestanding tents where I never really stake those out. I just kind of throw them up and then uh, throw all my gear in there and unless I had to put a rain fly. So hey guys, the battery died on that. So uh, luckily I had some charged up. But uh, I was talking about the stakes and the duplex and how um, I got spoiled with not... Uh, staking down the big Agnes tent, so it was hard to uh, get into the habit of doing that every night, and especially on that kind of terrain, and I, like I said, I broke a couple stakes, but um, it was pretty much my fault, um, and I found a stake, so that kind of balanced out, but I do need to replace a few, but uh, overall it worked great, uh, it never got wet inside, I pitched it real high so the bathtub would be way up, and uh, it worked out great. And that brings me to the z pack sleeping bag, which I've only used prior to this trip. I've used it one time um, on the river trail, which it was really warm on that trail, so I almost didn't even need this. And this is the 20 degree bag, z packs And uh, let me tell you, um, this was the best uh, piece of gear, I would say, on the trip. It was top-notch. I mean, uh, I kept this in under the raincoat. Like I said, I slid it under there every night, and it stayed dry, which kept my feet dry. I never had any issues with it getting wet. And, I mean, as cold as it was with the snow, sleet, um, and more snow, and just even the just the icy temperatures with frozen ground that thing really kept me warm like I said I never had to wear my coat or anything I just put sleep clothes on and it just was like a champ so z packs 20 degree bag uh, really really happy with that 
So that pretty much covers it, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, my backpack. You'll see in the videos that I don't have the Orange Granite Gear uh, Blaze AC60. I mean, I still have it, but I didn't use it. Um, cause a lot of this gear, the duplex and the sleeping bag, these are the things, the last three pieces that I've been trying to replace to get down as light as I could because... My big three before were over 10 pounds. I was carrying that big three-man tent that was five pounds. Um, my sleeping bag was 3.2, and that uh, backpack is 2.11. So it was just a little over 10 pounds. And uh, now I'm down to something, I mean, wow, let me see here. 3.95 pounds is what I'm down to. The tent with the stakes, 22.5. The sleeping bag is 20.5. And this wonderful old school, got a bunch of leaves in it now, still from the hike. I need to clean it up. Uh, Art Blast backpack. And believe it or not, uh, a friend of mine on YouTube that watches the channel, Ron Sowers, thank you very much, sent this to me, um, and all he wanted was a couple stickers. Um, I had some really uh, lame stickers made. They turned out way smaller than I thought. I liked the stickers, but when I got them, they were like that big, and I thought they were going to be like that. So um, I never gave them away, but I took a picture of them. Anyway, long story, he saw them on Instagram. We, we contacted each other, and he sent me this backpack and a, a, a sleeping pad, um, a Neo Air, and it's cut down. It's lighter than the one I have, but like I said, I chose not to take it on this because I knew it was going to be really cold. But let me tell you, this thing, I wasn't sure. I never even used it or tested it out uh, before the hike. But the way it's set up, I love this, how I could leave stuff in here and just be able to get to it real quick. I was able to just have water bottles and stuff in here. Um, and he sent it to me this way with all these pouches. I mean, I have my whistle in here, the uh, stick pick. I have the underwater camera case in one of these, so it was really easy to get to. Um, yeah, I had uh, my multi-tool that just fell out, um, other propel things in there. And up here, I kept my phone. I had an extra trash bag with me in case uh, I was lying in the pack with one, in case something happened to it. So I kept my phone in here, and I had all my snacks and everything in here, and I bought this tiny little spotting scope because I knew there were some stretches where it was really hard to see the next marker, and so I used this, and there were a couple times it really helped me out, and it was just kind of cool to have it. It's really light. I had a couple little uh, zoom up close micro, macro lenses I tried. It didn't turn out very well. Probably I'm not going to use any of the footage it didn't look right so but it was worth trying so anyway this thing weighs uh weighted it's like 20.2 ounces and i mean it just was awesome uh, i mean i'm definitely love the way it top loads and rolls down it cinches up real nice and uh, i mean i just can't say enough good things about it and this is an old one with a the belt doesn't come off, it's just, it's all sewn on there, so, uh, the only problem, one time one of these popped out, and I just was able to put it back in there and cinch it down, and other than that, it just was, I mean, I love it, I'll just say anyway, that. Anyway, that's pretty so much it, that's all my new gear, mixed in with a lot of old gear, um, so yeah, I appreciate you watching, and Ozark Trail through hike coming up soon. Uh, I did it November 10th through the 23rd. And last thing I want to say is um, another YouTuber, the XC Crow, who is a triple crowner. He just finished the CDT this year and is still putting up videos. So um, he's a featured channel now on my channel. So please check out his stuff and uh, like it, subscribe to it. It's really cool. His videos are nice and short. You can watch his CDT thing right now and it'd probably take you, I don't even think, an hour. And he's already in the Wind River range. He's obviously done with the trail, but the videos are still coming out. So you can still follow along. Um, thanks to him for giving me a ride. He met me um, at Berryman Campground. We camped. 
super cool guy. We uh, talked the whole time. We had so much to talk about with hiking, and I uh, asked him a million questions about the PCT and the CDT. And anyway, thanks to him uh, for the transportation and everything. It was super cool to meet you, and I hope we can go on a hike sometime. And last but not least, I want to thank Ron Sowers for this awesome backpack and the sleeping pad. Uh, even though I didn't use the sleeping pad, I guarantee you when the, it starts to warm up that I am going to use it. And I definitely love the backpack, so big thanks for that. And uh, I plan to use it until it falls apart because I really do love it. So that's it, guys. That's uh, everything I had. The Ozark Trail is about 230 plus miles with backtracking, getting lost, I'd say about 235 to 240. So uh, be looking for those videos. They're coming soon, and I'll see you somewhere on the trail. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mm -hmm.